And welcome back. The United Nations and the World Health Organization say the health system in Gaza is on the verge of collapse. Medical officials say the hospitals are down to the end of the fuel stores. The WHO reports that six hospitals in Gaza have already had to shut down. The UN tells NBC News that it will likely be forced to halt its operations in the area tonight due to a lack of fuel. I'm joined now by UNICEF spokesman Ricardo Pires. And Ricardo, thank you much, so much for joining us. And the UN and the WHO say hospitals in Gaza, as we just said, are out of fuel. Is that what you're hearing at UNICEF? And what is the impact that that will have on medical care? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, that, uh, that's what we're hearing as well. And there's no argument now that this is increasingly becoming a children's crisis um, for all the numbers we're seeing, the numbers of children killed, which uh, surpassed the 2000s uh, very recently, uh, disregarding the last attack yesterday, which uh, was one of the most brutal so far. We're hearing stories from, from hospitals and medical facilities where uh, neo-intensive neonatal care is completely compromised because of the lack of fuel and, and therefore electricity, which is so necessary to operate these, these facilities and the machines that are, for example, keeping babies in incubators and on ventilators because they are, they're so fragile, fragile at this point and they are at the forefront of this. They are suffering the biggest impacts and no doubt children are paying the highest par, uh, price for this crisis. And Ricardo, Israel claims Hamas has fuel that it's keeping from civilians in hospitals, tweeting these fuel tanks are inside Gaza, that they contain more than 500,000 liters of fuel. Ask Hamas if you can have some. Again, that's a tweet, this is a tweet from um, Israeli officials. What have you heard? Has there been any verification of those claims? No, I, I, I haven't heard anything um, regarding that, and, and that's not something I can comment, but... Uh, we know for sure that the fuel is over. Um, our supplies, in addition to fuel, we're talking about water as well, food, <laughs> medication for children. These supplies are also running out. We got some in, um, as we all know, uh, very recently, but this is not enough. We need that corridor to stay open. We need more supplies to get in. Uh, this is a matter of life and death for children. So, Now, Ricardo, the Biden administration has said that one of the main concerns here about fuel is making sure that it does not fall into the hands of Hamas. How are aid groups trying to make sure that that does not happen? Well, we have um, monitoring mechanisms on the ground. This is not the first em emergency we respond to. And, and this is a concern in many other places where UNICEF and other UN agencies are operating. But uh, we do have mechanisms in place to ensure that our humanitarian aid, that our supplies go to the beneficiaries, that they go to children and that they do not end um, in other hands. Um, and this is the case as well for this crisis. Uh, however, access uh, and security are big concerns at the moment, and, and it's much harder for UNICEF to operate with its logistics on the ground if we're not safe uh, and if we don't have access. And Ricardo, the White House has called for a humanitarian pause uh, to the airstrikes. Again, not a, not a ceasefire, but a pause for humanitarian aid to get in. What would that need to look like in order to make an impact on the situation on the ground? We need safety. Uh, First and foremost, our humanitarian workers need to, to access the impacted areas and be able to deliver for children and families uh, in, in a safe manner. Um, but also this corridor needs to remain open. This pause needs to remain, uh, needs to continue in order to, for this impact to actually be significant and the right supplies arrive, arrive, arrive at the right time and to the right people. And Ricardo, we've seen concerns about this growing crisis from all over the world. Since you're here right now, I wanted to give you the opportunity. How can people help? Well, I'm speaking to an American audience, so please go on uh, UNICEF USA and donate. We're accepting, accepting donations for this crisis, and they're very welcome, and we're very grateful uh, if you can do that. Ricardo Pierce, spokesman for UNICEF. Ricardo, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.